Hello and welcome to our talk. We are pleased to present our work Hollow Diffusion, training a 3D diffusion model using 2D images. Following is a brief summary of the work. Diffusion models introduced a paradigm shifting change in the field of generative modeling. They enable training of generative models with a stable learning objective and with full mode coverage of the sample distributions. This was followed up by the breakthrough works such as DALI, Imagen and Stable Diffusion which trained very large scale text to image models on billions of data samples. Inspired by this rapid and amazing progress in 2D image generation, we present Hollow Diffusion as the first 3D aware diffusion model that produces 3D consistent images and is trained with only post image supervision. On this slide, we show a few different samples generated using the trained hollow diffusion model on various classes of the real captured CoCD V2 dataset. We now present our proposed method. While moving from 2D diffusion models to 3D, we are presented with some challenges. Firstly, there isn't sufficient amount of ground truth 3D data available for training. Then, since there is no universal convention, the individual 3D objects or scenes have their own coordinate frames and it's a non-trivial task to find an alignment between all the 3D scenes. Lastly, unlike image pixel grids, there is no de facto representation for 3D scene data. In this work, we sidestep the issue of ground truth 3D data by utilizing only post 2D images of the 3D scenes as the training supervision and in order to tackle the problem of 3D representation, we propose to use a hybrid explicit-implicit grid of features decoded by an MLP for 3D radiance fields as the representation. The prior or concurrent works on 3D diffusion models handle the pertaining challenges either by first creating a corpus of 3D voxel grids by fitting them to the synthetic renders as a data pre-processing step or use the ground truth available point clouds of synthetic datasets. On the other hand, our proposed method learns a distribution over not only the 3D shapes but also their appearance and sidesteps the data creation process, which is compute heavy and prone to creating non-generalizable neural features of the fitted 3D radiance fields. Here's the full pipeline of the hollow diffusion training algorithm. Let's go through this one step at a time. The first step of the hollow diffusion training setup involves constructing an approximate 3D feature voxel grid using the source views of a randomly sampled scene from the training set. This is done by extracting features for the source views using a learnable encoder E. We then bilinearly sample features for each of the vertex of the voxel grid from each one of the source views as shown in the figure. Then lastly, we aggregate the features from different source views to obtain the approximate 3D feature voxel grid. Please note that this is only an approximate voxel grid since it doesn't have all the information about the 3D shape depending on the randomly sampled source views. Having obtained the approximate feature voxel grid V bar, we then proceed with our slightly modified denoising diffusion training step. The voxel grid is first noised or diffused with randomly sampled amount of noise for the tth time step to obtain the diffused feature voxel grid V bar T. The denoising unit D theta takes the V bar T and the time step T as input to predict the original clean version of the feature voxel grid V. Note that this constitutes the X start formulation of the denoising diffusion probabilistic models that is the DDPM algorithm. Since the ground truth 3D voxel grids are not available, we instead optimize a photometric error between the rendered images of the predicted feature voxel grid V and the ground truth images from the dataset for certain target views which are different from the source views. However, we find that a model that is trained like this unfortunately yields poor samples. Let's try to investigate why this happens. Here is a didactic illustration for of this phenomenon. Without loss of generality, assume that the regions of the underlying latent space of the 3D feature voxel grids look something like this. The green region is where we'd like the diffusion network to implicitly have the highest probability densities. 
By using the knife training method, we are essentially teaching the network how to go from various noisy versions of the approximate 3D feature voxel grids towards the clean and fully formed 3D grids. The network essentially learns to move the 3D samples from the pink and blue regions towards the green region in the training step. But at the time of sampling, there is an inconsistency between what the network has learned to do and what is input to the network. Since the network has only seen noisy versions of approximate grids, the network doesn't know how to handle noisy versions of fully formed 3D grids. Thus, most of the sampling trajectories end up in the pink region, leading to blurry and broken samples. To remedy this issue, we make another modification to the training step. We augment each of the blue training iteration with the yellow trajectory. With the bootstrap training scheme, the sampling trajectories correctly terminate in the green region, giving us desirable 3D samples. Coming back to the training pipeline, now the dotted arrows show the flow of the second bootstrap denoising pass of the training iterations. We thus minimize the sum of the two photometric losses L and L prime as the training objective. Finally, once the network D theta is trained, using our hollow diffusion technique, it can be used to draw samples in the latent space of the feature voxel grids. The conducted experiments are presented in the next section. These are the FID and KID scores to demonstrate the 2D generative quality of our result. Here are some rendered samples visualized for qualitative comparison. The samples generated using PyGAN are not 3D view consistent, while our samples maintain full 3D view consistency. Here we show the shapes of the generated 3D samples by rendering the normals and diffuse shading them with a single fixed light. As apparent, the diffusion network is able to mostly distill clean and floater free density fields from the 2D image supervision alone. Finally, we cover some of the limitations and the future scope of our method. Firstly, hollow diffusion needs the poses of the images at training time. This either requires expensive hardware calibration or running the structure from motion as a data processing step. We could train a viewpoint estimator end-to-end -end, but optimizing it can be challenging due to the unknown prior over the camera poses. Some of the future directions include training conditional 3D diffusion models, Instilling intuitive editing controls in the trained models, scene level generation, and last but not the least, very large scale models with better quality samples. Please feel free to check out our project page by scanning the QR code. We thank you for your attention.